Wireless camp lights. Check. Hands-free automated lights. Check. In-cab home office. Check. Oh, it's time to get a beer. <coughs> the lights automatically turn on. So, I mean, if you bought a camp, you know, you want to watch some Aussie Arvos. Keypad on my keys. And that turns on the lights on my car. Look, if you calculate the prices, this is like a sub $200 system. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make your own 12 volt box and get all those functions running on your own four-wheel drive. Welcome back to Aussie Arrows, and today is an exciting day because today we're beginning the 12 volt setup in the 80s. So first off, I'm gonna get these middle row seats out because I'm putting in a cargo barrier and this cargo barrier is gonna house sort of like a 12 volt panel I'm sort of gonna build. Look, I'm sort of making it off as I go along. Um, I've got some panels here to sort of use, but first I wanna take those middle row seats out, get them out, and then we'll start sort of putting everything together. So if you know me or remember the Pajero, you know the back of that car was a bit of a mess and I'm gonna try not to make the same mistake. That's why I'm using the cargo barrier to sort of try and contain everything a bit more. Um, I like to carry a lot of stuff when I go camping. Um, a lot of fire, cooking stuff, a, a lot of crap you don't really need, like hammocks and other things. Yeah, I'm a bit of a hoarder. The whole plan with this is to make it neat, but allow me to carry a lot of crap. So this eight-seater Land Cruiser is turning into a two-seater, so Let's get that happening. Oh yeah, have a go at that room. So now, let the 12 volt begin. All right, now this is my cargo barrier. I bought it second hand, probably slightly overpaid for it. I paid 250 bucks. But yeah, I'm not sure what brand it is. I think it's just like a Chinese brand to be honest. But they're pretty hard to find second hand these days. A lot of people seem to have thrown them out or just don't have them. And even buying them brand new, they want like 600 bucks for them. And they're hardly ever in stock. So I picked up the second hand one just because I wanted to give it a shot. And we'll see how it works and see if it's gonna work for our setup. But yeah, we'll get all these rest of these in and then throw it in. Something tells me this isn't gonna be as easy as it looks. All right, so the cargo barrier is in. Now, um, my next dilemma is just working out how exactly I want the 12 volt panel mounted. Like, do I go high where I can't see behind me or do I make it lower where I'll still be able to see out the back of the car? That's what I'm sort of working out right now. With the slide idea in my head, I made some measurements and got started making my first ever 12 volt box for the 80. All right, so I've decided to make a little 12 volt box to go on that cargo barrier. Now, the positioning that I wasn't sure about, if I was gonna go high or low, I decided to do sort of thinnish sort of box, which will just sort of finish just there. So it's perfect size that it doesn't come up my rear vision mirror. So, cause I didn't want to be, I didn't want to cover the whole back and feel like I was driving a van. As you can see, the box has begun. My carpentry skills are next to zero, um, but I'm just giving it a crack. I've also now started to do the front panel. So this is where I'm gonna put all my switches, stuff like that. So I'll give you a more of a better rundown of how my systems are all wired together because it's gonna do a few cool things. And yeah, so I'll get more into that in more detail. But now, just do more carpentry stuff, get the boxes done, and then can focus on the wiring. Got back to work, started drilling some holes for some Siggy ports. I then fitted in my actual 12 volt little switch panel and I fabbed up a little custom panel for my double throw double pole switches. All right, so today I'm gonna make more of a conscientious effort to talk to the camera because I haven't been doing that enough. But essentially where we left off, this is what the box is sort of looking like. It's just this carpeted chipboard stuff. And then that's gonna have basically a swing out door. It's gonna sit on that left hand side of the uh, cargo barrier. And then this is my control panel. So the switch panel in, just an eBay spec wire to put some Siggy ports, USBs in, and then these are gonna be my configuration switches. Double pole, double throw switches, which we're gonna be using to set different lighting configurations. But I'll show you that in more detail later. But today's mission, get this box done, um, and then we can start wiring everything. Now, 
I'm no carpenter, as you can tell, and this is very much a learning experience for me, from everything from using a jigsaw to doing the hinges, and it might look crap to a lot of people's eyes, but it's something I built for myself to fit my setup, and as you can see, I was pretty chuffed to have it actually working. Oh yeah, it's actually not that bad. Oh yeah, tell you what, first effort, I'm not complaining. <laughs> yes. So, now, have a close of a door. That ain't going nowhere, homies. Once that's attached, that does not want to come off. That's good. This whole project just reminded me that you have to get into crack. You might not be good at it. It might turn out to not look great, but it's the learning experience through it that makes it rewarding and then when you go look at it every day it's you can say I built that I gave it a crack and that's what makes it worth it and I was feeling pretty damn happy when it all fit in the car All right, so it's all mounted, secured. I'm actually pretty happy with it. For something I've made myself, I'm, I'm pretty stoked. I think I'm looking at door handles now. I'm thinking I kind of want to be able to access it because it, because I'm going to be able to basically swings open as like the control panel. And then you have in here, you're going to have all the wiring and fuse box, stuff like that. So you're not going to need to access it that often in case there's, unless there's like an electrical fault, but it's more just there to, you know, you can do your wiring behind here or change things or whatever, just to access it. All right, so I've added some new holes to the box just to basically get cables in and out. So we've got some, <laughs> and new feature, it's got a door handle on it. All right, so you might have seen me crawling around the car, getting that battery installed. Um, I've moved it to behind the cargo barrier. Now I'm making some wires for our actual box. So basically our positive and negative from the battery up to our actual 12 volt box. All right, so now the main power cable for the box is made. That's gonna be running in through these holes we drilled earlier at the back and run up to our circuit breaker. So let me talk to you a little bit about this. So I've got a 100 amp resettable circuit breaker here. I got resettable because I knew I'd be messing around and I'm doing a lot of switching. Um, a lot of, not complex switching, but just a lot of switching. So I wanted to have a resettable circuit breaker. I didn't want to be blowing a three dollar fuse if I just made mistakes. So that's resettable, which is awesome. So you can just reset. Um, I've heard that they're all right, so I'll, I'll see how it goes. Um, and that goes into our fuse block, which from here, basically we're gonna run all our accessories we need. So. That's where everything's all neatly fused, neatly earthed, um, and yeah. Obviously you can see I've finished the panel, well finished the top half of the panel here, so we've got our configuration switches, our normal switches, and I've also attached my wireless uh, receiver. So I'll talk more about this later, but I'm gonna be turning on things remotely. Let's just start wire up and get a bolt back in the car, and we'll get these switches all lit up and working. So let's go do that now. So I've just been going around and installing these little LED work lights. They're a um, white and amber sort of combo, so I can turn each on individually. So there's a wire for the um, amber and a wire for the white. So two of them on each side of the roof rack, just pointing down, just a little camp light sort of thing. I wanted the amber because it's good to have an amber light when you're like out by the fire and stuff. You don't want to like blind yourself. So I'm looking forward to seeing how good it is. These are just cheap eBay ones, but we'll see how they go and I'll let you know. So there's the lights all mounted. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do all the wiring for it first and then I'll get their positions absolutely perfect. But we'll do all the wiring, make sure it all works and then, yeah, give them a try. Amber's working. I'm liking it. We're getting there. All right, so the lights are all done. I'll show you now. Essentially, we got the two controls here. So, turns on this side and the other one turns on the other side, which you might be able to see. Um, and then you've got these switches here, which allow it to be changed to amber. So yeah, so using the um, double pole, double throw switches on the left here, and then just a single throw, single pole switch. This still needs to be made wireless, um, so we'll do that at some point, but it's working. So yeah, it's sick. But today we're gonna do something really pretty exciting. Something I'm very excited for. We're putting 
a computer in the 12 volt box. So I've got a little LCD screen here. I've got my little Raspberry Pi computer. It all runs off 12 volt, so super, super easy stuff. 12 volt screen, which everything, all, all electronics are DC, so it's perfect. So it's gonna be, it's gonna be awesome. So basically I've got to figure out a way to mount this, get it mounted, and then I'll plug it all in and I'll show you guys sort of what it can do. All right, so it's time to bring you guys back up to speed of what's been going on. So I was kind of rushed all this because I thought we were gonna go away on a trip that weekend, but turns out lockdown had other plans. So I'll give you a rundown now, on basically where I'm up to, what I've done, because I've added some more bits since you, you probably haven't seen it. Um, and we'll just sort of run through it. So we'll start off with, you saw me do the lights. I added four of these, I guess you call them a white amber combo light so I can turn on the amber and the white independently from each other, which is really good for camping. Like the amber light, I much prefer it over the white. The white's just way too intense. So I've got four of them on the roof and they're both on two separate circuits. So I can turn the left-hand side independently from the right-hand side of the car. That's all controllable via switches. It's also controllable wirelessly, which I'll show you guys in a minute. I've also gone ahead and done a motion sensor on the rear door. Now this is like, I love the motion sensor. This is like one of my favorite things and I'll show you that in a minute. But while it's still light outside, I'm gonna run you through the 12 volt board, what I've changed in it, what I've added, because I've added a lot of things, cleaned up the wiring and yeah. So let's just get into that and I'll show you what it all, all looks like now. So I talked a little bit before about adding the Raspberry Pi and the main reason I am adding the Raspberry Pi is simply to transfer files to a hard drive. That's literally it for camera work, like filming stuff on the road. That's what it's designed for. So it's all wired in now with my little screen and everything. So I can flick it on via a switch, boots up the Raspberry Pi and also boots up the monitor. So in a minute that should turn on and this might, this usually takes about 20 seconds to boot up. So if you haven't heard of a Raspberry Pi, they're like a hundred dollar mini computer essentially. They got USB ports on them. They can do the internet, they can do everything. They're basically, if you know what Linux is, they're sort of running Linux. It's almost like a Windows PC, but very miniature. Not super powerful, but enough to do simple file transfer and commands and stuff like that. So I had this lying around from uni, so I've kind of repurposed it in the 80, and now it is my file transfer computer system. So as you can see, Bruce up, little Aussie Avos logo there. Now, currently, I have to plug in the keyboard and mouse. I got a wired keyboard and mouse, but I have recently purchased a wireless one. But you plug in that, and then you're in. So essentially, it's a computer. I got my files on here, I've got everything I need. So when I go out filming for a day and the SD cards are full, plug them into the Pi, just via a USB SD card reader, and then transfer them to my hard drive. It's literally like having a mini computer on board. You might say, why the hell didn't you just buy a laptop? Look, laptops are cool, but I thought this was a pretty cool idea. Laptops can be expensive. This is a hundred bucks, and this monitor was literally $50 off eBay. It works treat, it's got good viewing angles. It's got sound as well. Um, so yeah, it's like having a mini computer on board, so I love it. So I mean, if you bought a camp, you know, you wanna watch some Aussie Arvos. I mean, yes, it's like a phone, but it's like a computer. You could, I could hook this up to a massive like 50 inch monitor and you could have it like fold off down here somewhere. And yeah, you, the possibilities of having a computer in your car are endless. And I'm a bit of a nerd, so I love it, but uh, yeah. <laughs> It's more just there for when you're out in the bush, you need a computer. This is a 12 volt computer that draws, as you can see, it draws next to no power at all. And that's the one thing, laptops draw a lot of power. This thing draws absolutely nothing. So, um, and it's just easy on a switch. So I'll turn that off. I'll run you through the rest of the panel. So I have shown you before how the lights work. That controls left hand side of the car, right hand side of the car. These ones here can essentially change them to amber. So you flick them up for amber on, take them off, and that's just normal white. So you can do either amber or white, all controllable from there. So this one here, this turns on this little guy up here, which I, th I don't even, I don't think I showed you this. This is a wireless relay, essentially. So it's got four relays on it, and they're controlled wirelessly by, by a keypad on my keys. So with this, if you be quiet and listen, you can hear the relay flick off, and that turns on the lights on my car. I'll show you that at night time because it's bloody awesome, but you can see it flash. You can hear it turning on the relays, which then go and turn on my lights on top of the car. So, so that's been really handy. Like, honestly, this is the fate, my most one, apart from the motion sensor, this is the best thing I've done on it. It's bloody sick. I've also added some strip lighting inside the cab here. So if I flick on this switch here, it lights up strip lighting across the cargo barrel. It's a really nice warm, sort of warm white color lets off a heap of light at night time. Like you can see this entire cab. It's bloody amazing. Uh, it draws a little bit of power, a little bit more than what I thought, but it's still really good. And this switch here, 
This turns on, this enables the motion detection for the rear of the car, which we will talk more about in a second. Yeah, that's what this is. This is a configuration panel. This is my, I guess you'd call it the main switching panel. Just simple stuff. Cheap, simple, cheap eBay port, um, eBay thing I bought. You know, I got USB sockets, etc. Got some more USB ports here, more sockets here. But let's actually show you inside the box. I'll show you how all the wiring came out. I'll show you how I mounted it. So I'm no master carpenter, but this has been the car for a few weeks now. It hasn't broken, it hasn't fallen off, so it's been pretty good. So you open it here, it just has these little latches here. It'll come open and you'll reveal the wiring. So essentially it's pretty basic. I've got my relays mounted here. Um, I've got my main fuse block, circuit breaker, all the stuff I showed you guys before. So as you can see, there's a lot of stuff going everywhere and it might seem really messy and look, it is messy, but it all works, it's all safe and everything does what it's meant to do and goes where it's meant to go. So this took a little bit of designing because there's a lot of configuration switching. There's a lot of like, I guess, I'm using a lot of double throw switches to basically use a switch to be able to trigger multiple circuits. So I'll show you how I designed all that. So when I was sort of buying all my components, working out how many switches I needed, da 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 da, I used to write all the circuitry on a piece of paper and it gets really hard because the minute you make one like mess up, you have to like erase it and redo it and it ends up taking forever and you have to just logically in your head work out, hang on, will this turn on this switch? Will this light up this light? Da 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 da. And I thought surely there must be like some better way to do this and I googled around the internet and I found this website called multi-sim it essentially allows you to simulate circuitry um, so I was able to basically go in draw my circuit on the website and then from there you can in real time trigger switches and see if it's actually going to do your intended purpose so I was able to go in there look at my circuit say hey all right if I flick this switch and this switch will it give me that result I want and that's how I did it. So once I worked out, all right, this is how many switches I need, I bought those switches, and then I was able to literally fire, follow my wiring diagram I made on multi-sim, I wired the whole the whole box in the car. So that's how I did it. The piece of paper is just um, a really messy way to do it. That will tell you voltages, that will tell you if you get in short circuits. It literally saves you so much time if you design your circuit online. Now obviously, not all circuits need to be designed online, like they're not, you don't have to make a complicated one. Mine's not even that complicated. It's just because I have a lot of switches going through switches um, to make certain functions do certain functions that multi-sim and using an online program like that save me a bunch of time. So I'll talk a little bit more about this wireless relay. It was like $14 on eBay and it came with two key fobs. It's got your little antenna there, so I, that's why it's mounted on the outside of the box, so it's the best possible reception. Um, you basically got your master power coming in, and then these are your powers coming out. So for each channel, which is basically refer refers to each channel on here. So this will only put out about, uh, I think it's three amps tops. So all of this, all of these go to the relays inside the box, which then obviously allow it to have more power to turn on bigger lights, etc. I probably could have got away with just using this, but I didn't want to be pulling crazy power through this thing in case of fire. Speaking of fires, if you look down here, I've mounted a quick access fire extinguisher just under the dat under there basically so if you're ever doing 12 volt stuff ever doing 12 volt stuff that is somewhat a lot of wires going over it no just just blanket rule if you're doing 12 volt stuff carry fire extinguisher because i'm not an auto elect sparky you know i'm not super qualified so if there was an error or even if a fuse holder or the circuit breaker you know failed or whatever you want to have one of these because this torched up in the car i'm not i don't want to sit there and watch the car burn so really essential to get yourself a fire extinguisher um they're not expensive, they're cheap. And I'm I'm a tight ass, but they're cheap. So go, go, go buy one. I will quickly show you too, for those who are interested, how I mounted it to the cargo barrier. Essentially, um, I've just got four bolts, two at the top, two at the bottom, going in, and then I've got another plate on the back of the cargo barrier, which essentially allows it to sort of sit up to it. So, yes, the cargo barrier is not a perfect, you know, flat. It's not perfectly like that. It goes like that and that, but you can see that it does work using that sort of clamp system, sort of clamp it on and it's not going anywhere. It's um, it's solid as. So, now, let me show you my favorite part. Now this is ultra, I don't know, I haven't seen any other floor be set up with this on it. And I was really surprised because this eBay part was $11 and it's literally a game changer. It's, it's revolutionized the way I access the back of the car and it's, um, it's awesome. It's, I, I don't know why not more setups have it in it, but anyway, let me show you the motion sensor on the rear tailgate. All right, so by flicking this switch here, that'll power on the rear motion sensor. So now, 
you can see there's no lights on the back of the car at all. Nothing's turned on, it's all off. Now we grab the tailgate. And my lighting turns on. So this is my motion sensor right here. As I said, like $11 eBay part. Uh, the wiring's a bit of a mess at the moment, but I mean, it'll work. So essentially all you got is a positive coming into it and a positive coming out, coming out of it. It's a switch essentially, which just relies off motion. And then once I've walked off, this has a timing delay on it. So I've got it set to a minute time delay. So let's demonstrate how it works actually. I'll show you. You can simply walk up to the car and the lights turn on for you. So. I don't know about you guys, but I think that's the coolest mod ever. And the best thing about this, like, it's constantly checking for motion. So it's never, like, dulls out and comes back. Like, if you're here moving, it's not going to turn off the, like, shut off. It's, it's, it's awesome. So I can go here, get my drink, whatever, close the fridge, and literally walk away. And it doesn't matter, because that's going to turn off. Like, and I, I don't know, I just think it's honestly the best mod you can do, because you can put it on a canopy, put it on a, in a car, they're just, they're bloody awesome. Um, and for a cheap eBay part, it works really well. So we'll show you that all at night time too, because that's when this whole car really shines. So, so what we'll do, wait for it to get a little bit darker, and then I'll show you how these lights work remotely. So you can see them working now, but you guys want to see them at night time. You want to see this whole setup at night time with the lights. So wait till it gets dark, and I'll show you how it all works. It's bloody awesome, so stay tuned. All right, so it's got a bit darker now. I can show you how these lights actually work. So this is my dongle, I guess you call it, I'm using. So basically this just connects to the wireless relay up there and basically just triggers it. So this is the left-hand side of the car. This is the right-hand side of the car. These top two are just whites. So if I hit the B button for this side, they're my white lights. So I guess if you ever, you know, you're setting up camp or you just need some like bright lights on a track or whatever, these can shine out and be easy. Um, and then I've got also on here, I've got the amber as well. <clears throat> so that, these are good sort of camp lights, you know, if you don't want anything too bright, you get them. And you can do both of them too, at the same time. So this is, because it's just a four channel relay, you can set off any one of your things. And I guess the coolest thing about this is that you don't have to run lights off this. You could run literally any electrical component through this. You could, you could start your car off this if you wanted to. Like you can get, you can make all different sorts of, sorts of cool things. So um, yeah. These wireless relay things are bloody awesome. Like, and the range is up to like, I've, I reckon I've walked 100 meters away and still been able to turn this on and off. So the range is, is bloody awesome. So, and it's responsive too. And just a quick thing, those lights were like 34 bucks on eBay for four of them. This is what light they put out. So, I mean, not bad. I mean, the only reason I bought them was for that sort of amber function. Um, but yeah, they actually put out a decent amount of light as well. So yeah, not bad lights. And now, I'll show you probably the coolest part of the car. So there's no need for this. You can throw your keys away, have nothing on you. Let's walk around the back of the fridge. Oh, it's time to get a beer. <coughs> the lights automatically turn on. So I think that is probably the coolest bloody mod that you can do. So obviously that little sensor up there detecting motion. And then I've ran strip lighting across this whole top tailgate. And yeah, it's perfect. So now I can grab my beer out, whatever, shut the fridge, go back to camp, walk away, and in about 40 seconds, that light will turn off. And as you can see, it's turned off, and yeah, you, you can literally, if you wanted to activate it again, walk back underneath it. Like, the range is superb. The range is unreal. I'll actually, let's, I'll demonstrate the range. So to show you where I am, can you see me with this little torch? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm way over here. My car's there. Let's show you the range on this thing. <laughs> How cool is that? So it's not like one of those annoying motion sensors you have to get like right under and like wave 10 times. I was all the way back here and it sets it off. So it's and for $11 on eBay, you cannot go wrong with it really. It's absolutely awesome. Running that whole thing, the whole light straight on it. Like, no, oh, so good. So that's my 12 volt video on making my 12 volt box. Um, pretty stoked with how it all turned out. For something that, look, if you calculate the prices, this is like a sub $200 system. If you don't count this Raspberry Pi, sub 200 bucks. And the way it's turned out and the switches and everything, I love it. It's, it's bloody awesome. I can't wait to actually use it on a camping trip because it's just, it's gonna be mint. I'll leave links to all the motion detection stuff and the wireless relays in the description because I'm sure a lot of you probably wanna check them out. But yeah, absolutely stoked with the box. I love it. Probably next, need to put some solar onto it. Um, probably didn't really need to be that big, but I probably could have made it that high. But anyway, something I just whipped up over the week. So 
I'm stoked with it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you gave you some ideas, some aspirations. So like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.